reasons of sickness or difficulties, we pray your blessing upon them and this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. And Matt's going to share some songs with us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You did so well last week with this new song. I thought we would do it again. This is Holy is the Lord God Almighty. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy.
And I was thinking, you know, growing up and in my household today, our mothers are constantly serving. You know, sometimes we don't even realize it. And, it, and I don't think they realize it because it's second nature for them. And my prayer is today is that serving others like our mothers serve their families would be second nature to us. Make me a servant. to you in prayer. 
We pray for those who say there is no God. May we, through the living of our own lives, demonstrate the joy and peace of a Spirit-centered existence. God of community, we pray for our own congregation, for our own city, for our own neighborhoods. May we be a source of hope for our neighbors. Help us to discern the needs of those around us and work to fulfill them. Strengthen and unify our congregation and show us how we can be the disciples you've called us to be. Return the sick to health and well-being. Relieve the suffering of those who have lost loved ones and are unable to find meaningful hope. Be a source of courage and hope to those who are unemployed or underemployed. Be with those who experience fear in any type during their lives. Guide us, great shepherd, into your paths of right relationships. All these things we pray as Christ our Savior has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you look around the walls and up here on the chancel and on the windows behind you, there's a lot of handmade stuff that our ABW, our American Baptist Women's Group, has put together. I don't recall the details. Marianne, would you be willing to share just briefly what all of this is and where it's going? Marianne and I chose to wear the same outfit today, so I thought she would be a good one to stand next to. <laughs> the 90 pillowcase dresses are going to the Little Dresses of Africa. Um, we have to send two dollars per dress for shipping costs going to from Wisconsin to Africa. There are 25 birthday kits along the back walls. We have to send um, two dollars a piece for those on shipping. And then there are 10 um, Africans quilts that are going to go to the um, hospitals and children's centers in the greater metropolitan area. So our women's ministry is not merely a social group, although there is an aspect of fellowship. This is a service group, a ministry group, and what you're seeing around you are the fruits of a year's worth of labors. We did this last year as well, so I'm going to offer a prayer of blessing for all of these along with our offering. So first, we'll, we'll invite the ushers forward, but with the offering sentence today that comes from Revelation, um, the fifth chapter of Revelation, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And as we prepare our offering in these forms, now we also invite the ushers to receive our monetary offerings and gifts today.
Yes, I, I, I distinctly, I know that's scary. Yes, I know. Well, first of all, happy belated birthday. Yesterday was Ben's birthday, and we were eight, nine? How did that get away from me? Nine? That's hard to believe, Ben. But happy birthday. Ben celebrated all week, so he, he's had a good birthday. And I do have to say, my husband's birthday is today, so I'm happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ray. Did you do anything with all this birthday stuff you've got going on, Ben? Did you do anything special for your mom yet? Really? Can you tell us what it was? I purchased ice sticks when there was a little cup holder. I put a little cup and pet flowers in there, and then there was a slot. Very, very nice. Stella, did you do anything? Well, me and the boys got her like a flower pot with flowers in it. Okay, all right. So, I would say you've had a good morning. All right. Well, do you think the puppets have anything planned for today? I'm guessing so. I'm guessing so too. Let's see. Good morning, Kingdom. Hi, everybody. Happy birthday, Ben. Yep, happy birthday. Shalom, everybody. Welcome. And um, it says this work that it's Ray's birthday, but Mother's Day. Who waits on who? It's a it's a 50-50 day. Oh, I got you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Anyway, happy Mother's Day to all you ladies out there. And that kind of takes care of my first question for you guys. Apparently, you have remembered that today is Mother's Day. Of course I did. How could I forget? My mom drums hints all week. Make sure that my dad and I didn't forget. So, Ben did, and his brother and, and Ella did special things for their mom. What kind of special things do you have planned for your mom today? Well, yesterday I cleaned my room and I already made breakfast. You were, you were a nice breakfast this morning. What? You can cook? So, why didn't you invite me and William too? <laughs> well, I, I didn't actually cook, I guess. Pop a couple of Eggo waffles in the toaster and put some fresh strawberries on the plate to go along with it. Hey, that sounds pretty good to me. I'd like a breakfast like that about any other, any day. Yeah, me too. Later, my dad and I are going to take Mom out for dinner and then we're going to watch the DVD that I bought her the Sound of Music. You know what, Homer? That sounds like a wonderful day that you've planned. Good planning on your part. And what about you, Malachi? What special things have you got planned for Lillian today? Well, until a little while ago, nothing. But, what? Well, let, let, let me explain, let me explain. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, that Bible passage Adrian just read changed my mind. Here's the deal. Lillian gave me strict orders not to fuss over her on Mother's Day because we don't have any kids. She claims she doesn't deserve to be honored today. Oh, it's just silly. Of course she deserves to be honored, along with all the other mothers and caretakers that we have all over the place. Well, that's what I thought, too. I mean, think about it. She and I may not have any actual kids, but she's got me. She takes care of me all the time, and we all know what a big baby I can be. Yep, yep, I won't dispute that. That's true. Yeah. From your mouth to God's ear, ain't that true? Anyway. She takes care of me and all the neighborhood kids. She volunteers at the local food bank. She donates money to all kinds of charities so people have all the things they need. Aren't those the kind of things moms do for their families? That's exactly the kinds of things that moms do. Absolutely, Malachi. Lillian pretty much is the second mom for me anyway, so, you know, I can, I can tell. Yeah, right. that's, yeah, that's true. She's a lot like that Tabitha person that Adrian just read about in the Bible. Oh, how did that go exactly? Well, I believe the passage says that Tabitha was always doing good and helping the poor. Yep, that's right, and that's my Lillian. So, I'm going to ignore what she told me and do everything I can to honor her today. I'm going to start by bringing her some flowers if the florist shops are still open. Well, you know what, Malachi? You are in luck today. You don't have to go to the florist. We have flowers 
right over here that we're going to give to all the ladies who are here this morning in church. And I'll make sure that Lily gets an extra special one for you to take to her. Okay? Right. That's great. Uh, are there any big ones? Do you like pink? Well, I'll see in just a minute. I don't really see pink. I see red and coral. Oh, well, those are good. Okay. Yeah. But before we do all that, can we sing prayer? Oh, that sounds like a great idea. All right. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for women, mothers, caretakers, nurses, sisters, uh, cousins, aunts, all of the women who influence our lives and do things for us. And we appreciate and honor them today. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless them with a wonderful day today and throughout this week. In your name, amen. 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 Oh, oh, there, I see them. Are those the flowers in here now? There they are. They're over there on the, on the pew. So what we're going to oh. do, all the ladies, would you please stand? Ben, would you go over and help them pass some flowers? So all the ladies, please stand. And when you get your flower, if you will sit down so we know that you have gotten your flower, we will appreciate that. And just... Go to anybody that's standing up. <laughs> I can't believe you're, you're making him work on, on the day after his birthday. Day after his birthday, you know why he's really happy to do that. Hey, this is when you have kids. That's yeah, right. Slave labor. <laughs> that's right. right. So when you, again, when you get your flower, <laughs> you may be seated. Oh, look at this. Pastor's going to take oh, the big ones. He's figured out a way to to get more help here. <laughs> hey, don't forget about the end. Leave one for Lily. Oh yeah, we gotta have one up here for Lily. Right. That's not gonna get to all good. This passing out the flowers has become a tradition and the uh, diaconate does this and we just can't think of a better gift to give mothers on Mother's Day than a flat one. I hope that you agree. Amen. So every lady, every lady got a flower? Ruth, did you get yours? Okay. All right. We okay. thank you and have a wonderful day, ladies. Yep. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Yep. Everybody, happy okay. Father's Day. See you next week. See you next week. You can remain seated. We'll sing together uh, a hymn with uh, number 92, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. Verses 1, 3, and 4, the words are the only screen.
mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. I want to talk a little bit about the 23rd Psalm today, but I do have to acknowledge that there is a special day on the calendar, and so maybe we can just say it together once to acknowledge it. Happy birthday, Ray! <laughs> yes, it's Mother's Day also, of course. I, I was curious about this, when it's Mother's Day and Ray's birthday on the same day, who prepares breakfast for whom? I guess everyone's on their own. We went to parties. We went to parties. <laughs> Anna Jarvis is remembered as the founder of Mother's Day. Actually, it was her mother, Anne, who was first, um, she, she desired to have a day of recognition for mothers. Anne, the mother, um, was a social activist. She was a community organizer. This was back during the Civil War era. She was very outspoken on controversial issues. She was one of those ladies that would tell you exactly what she thought regardless of who thought otherwise, she was threatened regularly for her views, her views on women's rights, her views on health care. Her opponents called her a crazy liberal. Remember, this was during an era in American history when women's opinions counted for about as much as, well, they didn't, honestly. Politics, religion, pressing issues of the day, these were all handled by men. The mere fact that she involved herself in public issues labeled her as a liberal agitator. Her views on health care and Jarvis advocated, you're not going to believe this, the, oh, the agitator, the troublemaker she was. She advocated for sanitary conditions in hospitals. Can you imagine the nerve of this woman? She advocated for better training for doctors in an effort to reduce rates of infant mortality. Oh, the nerve. She organized clubs to buy medicine and to train nurses to provide better health care to women during and after childbirth. She developed programs to inspect milk to ensure the safety of milk. This was long before state or federal regulations monitored the ingredients or the safety of our food. How obnoxious can you imagine? This spunky and outspoken Methodist Sunday school teacher, by the way, simply did not conform to the role of quiet housewife. She wanted to make life better for women and children everywhere. She believed women contributed far more to society than anyone was willing to publicly recognize in those days. And she made a very public case for the recognition of women's contributions to society. So she began creating mother's clubs all around the country, and she encouraged and supported other women to get involved in social matters. So Anne's daughter, Anna, was so inspired by her mother's advocacy work that Anna made it her mission in life to recognize not just the legacy of her own mother, but the legacy of all women who work for others. So Anna Jarvis, in the early 1900s, around the time of her mother's passing, began organizing community celebrations for mothers and women in various communities around the U.S. At a memorial service for her mother on May 10th, 1908, Anna Jarvis gave a carnation, which was her mother's favorite flower, to each of the women who attended. And within the next few years, that idea caught on and it picked up in notoriety and popularity. And Mother's Day was observed then increasingly in a, a larger number of U.S. cities. On May 9, 1914, by an act of Congress and ratified by President Woodrow Wilson, Mother's Day was declared an official U.S. holiday to be observed on the second Sunday in May. The, the Congressional um, Charter says, for the public expression of our love and reverence for the mothers of our country, which means today is officially the 108th Mother's Day in the United States, which also means that this is the 108th year that men have struggled to buy just the right gift for that important woman in their lives. I may have shared with you before, the first year of Elvis' life, I didn't get Julia Mother's Day didn't know I 
was supposed to. She's not my mom. <laughs> you only learned that lesson once. <laughs> I read a story once about Mother's Day gifts. There were three sons who were all very wealthy and successful in their professional lives, discussing the gifts that they would send their elderly mother on Mother's Day. The first said, I have arranged for a very large house to be built for mom. The second said, well, I've arranged for a Mercedes to be sent to mother. The third said, I've got you both beat. You know how mom enjoys the Bible, and you know she can't see very well, so I sent her a parrot that can recite the entire Bible. It took 20 monks at a monastery more than 12 years to teach this parrot to do this. I had to pledge to contribute $100,000 to the monastery, but it was worth it. Mom just has to name the chapter and the verse, and the parrot will recite it. A few weeks later, Mom mailed her thank you letters to her sons. To the first son, she wrote, Dear Michael, the house you built is too large. I only live in one room, and I have to clean the whole thing. <laughs> to the second son, she wrote, Dear Marvin, you know my eyesight is failing. I don't drive much anymore. I stay home, and I never really use this car. Dearest Melvin, she wrote to the third son, you were the only son to have the good sense to know what your mother likes. That chicken was delicious. <laughs> so back to Ann and Jarvis for a moment. <coughs> Ann and Jarvis, the woman who is ultimately remembered as the founder of Mother's Day, as a tribute to her own mother, eventually she tried to have Mother's Day rescinded. She wanted to undo the holiday because she hated how commercialized it became so quickly. History tells us that Anna Jarvis ultimately died in a sanitarium. Her medical bills were paid for by people in the floral and greeting card industries. <laughs> The relationship between Mother's Day and the church, it's an interesting one. Mother's Day is not a religious holiday. It's a day the church sort of tolerates, but not one that pastors are really taught to promote. In fact, many pastors tend to avoid Mother's Day. It falls right in the middle of Eastertide, that season between Easter and the ascension of Christ. This is a time when normally we preach about resurrection and post-resurrection appearances of Jesus teaching the disciples about discipleship and all of that, and it's not really a scripturally based holiday. And what's worse, and this is something that pastors do think about, Mother's Day is not received the same by everyone. There are women in our world today who abandon, abuse, or corrupt their children, who create a poor role model. For some, motherhood is an accident, not always a welcome one. For some, biological motherhood is not possible, and today this stirs up all sorts of emotions. For some, mothers weren't really all that nice, and the thought of a day to honor mom is just kind of hurtful for wounds that haven't been fully healed. For some, motherhood, under the very best of circumstances, isn't quite the bed of roses June Cleaver made it out to be. Let's be honest, Mother's Day, for a lot of people, can be complicated. So what does all of this have to do with our readings today? Truthfully, not much, at least on the surface. I think in our world today, we have finally come to realize there's much more to mothering than simply birthing children. We talked about this some during the, the puppet presentation. There is a component of service, a component of service combined with compassion that love-based service of others. And this is much less about biological motherhood and much more about sacrifice and giving. In our African-American congregations, which by the way, make up almost a third of our American Baptist denomination, a mother in the church is a title of reverence and significance and it has nothing to do with biological children. A mother in the black church is typically an older woman, strong in her faith, who is looked upon as a godly lady to serve as an example of care and compassion and leadership in the community. These are spirit-filled uh, spirit women of wisdom, 
Mother is used as a title, just like pastor or deacon. So you would say, good morning, Mother Ruth. Or good morning, Mother Mary Ann. It's good to see you today. The characteristics of mother in the black church are remarkably similar to the characteristics of the shepherd described in the 23rd Psalm. I wonder if when you hear that 23rd Psalm, if you can imagine that mothering type of a person. For centuries, the 23rd Psalm has been one of the most treasured passages in our scripture. It's among the one of the most familiar. It's so familiar that even people who don't come to church recognize these words. They're among the most comforting passages of scripture, often quoted in times of trouble or distress, almost always used at funerals. There are many images in the 23rd Psalm that hold particular meaning. One image comes from the verse, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. They comfort me. It would be so wonderful if God could simply promise us that we would never go through difficult times in life. Wouldn't that be nice? If God would say to us, everything's going to be perfect, you'll never have difficulties or challenges or times of trial. But we do go through great times of trial. We go through terrible difficulties. These happen all the time in people's lives. And God constantly warns us of these dangers. St. Peter wrote in his first letter, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trials you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. We're told that even though we're followers of Christ, we will still endure uncomfortable uh, times of difficulty and distress. The Bible tells us there will be difficult times. Psalm 23 voices such a warning. It does not say God will keep you from danger, but rather it describes that there will come times, they will come for all of us, when we feel like we are walking through a dark, dark valley, a valley of loneliness, a valley of despair. But what the Word of God does make very clear is that as we move through these dark valleys, God is with us. We're not alone. God is there to comfort and sustain us like a loving and compassionate mother. God is there to protect and care and guide us. If the image of God as a mother is troubling for you, and after all, we do so often use the masculine language to describe God, I might direct you to the Old Testament book of Isaiah, where God says through the prophet, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You can find that in the 66th chapter of Isaiah. Or Jesus' words recorded in both Matthew and Luke's gospel, Jerusalem, O oh Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And in the 23rd Psalm, even though we see the masculine pronoun he used to describe the shepherd, the life-giving acts described in the 23rd Psalm, they really do fit the role of a church mother, setting us straight, caring for us during difficult times, challenging us, keeping us together, and like a mother bear protecting her cubs, guarding us, watching over us, protecting us from evil. Janice Hunt Johnson is an author. She's the founder of a ministry called Renewal Ministries. She's written her own version of the 23rd Psalm, especially for Mother's Day, and I think it does a brilliant job of capturing this image of a church mother. It describes mothering characteristics, the life-giving acts of God. It goes like this. God is our mother shepherding me through life. I have everything I need. She makes me take a breathier lie in the grass and walk by the peaceful lake. I feel her healing power. She gives me fabulous meals, motivational conversations, and steers me in the right direction for goodness sake. Yes, even when really bad things happen or I get into big trouble, I don't have to be afraid of anything because you, Mother, make everything all right. Even if things are looking grim and we're surrounded by bad news, you don't run and hide. You protect me. You just keep preparing only the best for me, right here in front of me. 
You choose me for a special purpose. You comfort me. You guide me. You challenge me. And you always provide me with more than I need. Without a doubt, all your goodness, patience, and forgiveness will persistently follow me for as long as I live, and I will live in your heart and home forever and ever. And may God bless all of our church members. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, as we reflect on the 23rd Psalm, the image of your compassionate care for us, help us also to see the compassionate care that we receive from women in our own lives, the women who have answered your call to serve one another. We remember our church mothers, the women in our spiritual upbringing who have guided and nurtured and sustained us. And today, along with biological mothers, with aunts, with grandmas, with sisters, Help us also to remember our church mothers, those women without whom we simply wouldn't be where we are spiritually. We thank you for them and we pray your blessings upon them. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would stand with me as you're comfortably able, we'll sing hymn number 379, Take My Life and Let It Be, verses 1, 5, and 6, and the words of the on the screen.